Okay, welcome back. What you're about to learn in this section is going to be crucial for your online success, not just your SEO success, but online success. I'm talking about something called keyword research. Keyword research is the foundation on which you will be creating your content. Your content has to match with what the user is typing into Google. How do you find what the user is typing in Google on the search box? That's exactly what you're going to learn with keyword research process. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step practical guide to doing keyword research so that it's easy for you and you will be able to implement it immediately. Okay, so let's get started. So let's start with the first step within the keyword research process. We'll call this brainstorm. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to brainstorm and come up with key words that we think will be appropriate for our business. Uh, and I'm taking a fictional business here. Let's assume that we are going to start a business of training. We're going to train French language for the people in San Antonio, Texas. So if I were to start a training institute, what are some of the keywords that I would target? In the brainstorm step, what I do is I put myself in my customer's shoes and try to figure out if I were looking for French language courses in San Antonio, Texas, what search queries would I do? What are some of the things that I would type into Google search engine to find the results? Okay, so let's get started. First, uh, so from a first customer's perspective, this is what I'm going to type. French um, language training courses San Antonio okay French language classes in San Antonio okay I'm just putting myself in my potential customer my prospective customers shoes and I'm thinking how would they type on Google okay so let me continue French language uh, courses in San Antonio um, French language school in San Antonio and some some people also do the Texas so let me go ahead and add T E X A S and one last one let's see French language institutes in San Antonio TX. So you see, I'm, I'm looking at all the different ways that an individual would search on Google. Okay, so now the next step in this process is analyzing the search engine results by page. So let's do that. Analysis of SERP. SERP is nothing but your Google search engine results page. You go to Google, type something like ice creams and whatever comes up right here, right? All these are called search engine results page, right? This, this entire page. So we're going to analyze each of these keywords to find out if it is in line with what we intend to do. In this case, looking for a French language training school. So go ahead, copy that. Let's put it in here and look at what comes up. By the way, I also keep an eye on this part. If I see some advertisements that are relevant to what I'm searching, it's, a, it's an indication that we are on the right track. People and businesses are actually investing on this keyword, right? That's what it means. So let's, but this is a paid advertisement, okay? So we wouldn't consider that for SEO purposes. I'm just letting you know that it's an indicator that there is money in it, okay? So let's look at the search results. These are called the organic search results. And usually you will find 10 results on a Google search engine results page. So here goes. First one, learn French and then San Antonio. So that, that gives me an idea that, that we are on the right track. We are targeting the right keyword because this search result came up as a part of um, the SERP. Okay. Next, French courses, San Antonio language school. Again, very clear indication that we are on the right track. French classes in San Antonio and so on and so forth. So definitely we are on the right track. We are on the right path. So it's a good keyword. 
So I'm going to just say yes or a no. This is a binary. So either a yes or no. The keywords that have come up in the brainstorm step, we'll call this seed keywords. Okay, we're going to literally consider that as a seed and we'll expand uh, this li list further when we, when we do the expansion in a, in a little bit. So um, hang on. Okay, let's do the same thing with the next keyword in this list. Go back in here. I've copied that. I'm going to paste it in here and see what comes up. Okay, you see now I don't see that search result. That's fine. Um, in the sense, I don't see that advertisement in the search results. However, I do see the same website, Learn French, San Antonio. Very cool. So this is my competitor. Apparently, um, they are ranking uh, right at the top. French courses, San Antonio, again, the same thing. French lessons, San Antonio. You see, now I get an idea that maybe I should use the word lessons, right, within this keyword list. Uh, this is how people are targeting. So that's, that's good. That gives me some idea. French classes in San Antonio, maybe I, I might want to include that as well. But overall, the objective of this second step is to only analyze your search engine result page and say whether it is yes or a no in terms of we being on the right track. Is this keyword a good one? I'd say yes, because we see competitors again. Okay, moving on, let's quickly look at the third one. Now, once you get a hang of this, you're going to see the results on the search engine results page are going to be very similar. You see, no surprises here. Now, I put the third keyword in. Let's look at the search results. Again, it's going to be the exact same results. I see the exact same results. So we are on the right track. Again, this is a good keyword. Let's move on. Let's just keep it aligned. Great. So I'm going to copy the next one, French language school in San Antonio, Texas. I'm going to copy it and paste it in. Now, as you get used to this keyword research process, you'll understand that the moment you see the search results, you will know you're on the right track or not because, you know, your competitors like learnforgood.com or languagetrainers.com are targeting those keywords. Okay. So if you notice, uh, Learn for Good, which is a training institute, is, is targeting that keyword. But I wouldn't really break my head on Yelp and Thumbtack because they are more like platforms, not really my direct competitors. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the last keyword in this list, in the seed keywords list. I'm going to copy it. French language institutes in San Antonio, Texas with a TX. Let's see what comes up. Um, I have a gut feeling we are on the right track again. Absolutely. Okay, great. So now I know that the keywords that I've listed here may not be the, the exact ones that I'm going to eventually target on my page, but it just shows me that I'm on the right track. I'm going to go ahead, use these seed keywords to expand that list. I'm going to see more keywords that would be relevant here. Okay, so I've targeted five keywords here. All five are good. Great. So I'm going to move on to the next steps in the keyword research process. Like I told you, here it's going to be about expansion. And I call this Google Auto. And I'll, I'll tell you why I call that Google Auto. And just so that you know, we are expanding the list. So here goes the seed keywords. Here is the expansion. So let's quickly do a little bit of expansion on this. Um, so what I do is usually go back to Google and pay attention now because this is going to be very important. Uh, to me, this is the most important step in the keyword research process. I'll just type French courses. And then as I do the space bar, you're going to see some suggestions made by Google right here. You, you see all these. These are called auto suggestions. Google is suggesting you some keywords. Now, these keywords that we see auto suggested are based on what people are already searching. You're following what I say. It helps you understand that your prospective customers 
or already searching something on these lines. Now, because I'm in Bangalore, India, these results are showing up, which are more relevant to my location. But as you type San Antonio, for example, You see, there we go. Google is suggesting me some very specific keywords that might be applicable for people who are searching in San Antonio, Texas. So the first one in this list is French courses San Antonio, French classes in San Antonio, French classes in San Antonio, Texas, and French classes in San Antonio, Texas with the TX. How cool is that? Now this I call a treasure trove. Literally, we got a bunch of keywords just by starting with something and simply hitting the space bar. And Google auto suggests us, gives us hints that people are searching like this. Wouldn't you agree? This is a great way to find really good keywords. Okay, so I'm going to copy all of these and paste it in in my Excel sheet or I might as well type it in. So French courses in San Antonio. Let's do that right now. We'll get, go back again and then you see you type in N French classes in San Antonio French classes in San Antonio Texas that's how it was I'll show that to you in a little bit and the same keyword except that instead of um, the T-E-X-A-S, the last keyword had just T-X. So let's do that. Okay, so just so that you are on the same page, I'm going to go back in here, type in I-N-T, there we go. Um, classes in San Antonio, classes in San Antonio, Texas, San Antonio T-X. You see, we've got all of that. Now, it's not just that, I also have another option for you, okay? And if you would like to try this, that'll be great too. So there's an amazing tool called Ubersuggest, okay? So just go to Google and type Ubersuggest, there we go. U-B-E-E-R, I'm sorry, U-B-E-R-S-U-G-G-E-S-T, Ubersuggest. It's available on Neil Patel's website. By the way, Neil Patel is one of the very popular figures in the world of digital marketing and SEO. So I would definitely recommend you check his website out at neilpatel.com. So we're just waiting for the page to load up. Excellent, there we go. I'm gonna go into this website and type in the keyword. You see right there it says, enter a keyword or a phrase. I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm going to say French courses, San Antonio, right? That's it. It's in the web and English, United States. Excellent. Let's click on look up. And uh, you see it's processing right now. As the, as the processing happens, whatever we did right now in terms of searching Google to find out what Google auto suggests, Uber suggests that does exactly the same thing. Um, it looks at all the different options. First of all, it considers French courses in San Antonio. Along with that, it tries various uh, permutations and combinations. It adds like A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. And it's gonna spit out a bunch of keywords. Okay, there is some error. Um, just bear with me. Okay, so if you notice, uh, the moment we search like that, we are going to get some amazing keywords, 287 uh, keyword ideas, which is great, but I'm not saying all of, the, all of them are going to be appropriate or good. Um, so you're gonna get some good ones, but there'll be a bunch of uh, keywords that may not be appropriate. For example, Arabic classes in San Antonio. Maybe we are not interested in that. Uh, and if you do not want some keywords, uh, you could filter it out by, let's say, Arabic. Um, let's say culinary. I see right here, um, somewhere here, I saw culinary right here. You see, you can remove that. 
let's say cake. Um, so let's do that, okay? And then when I do save, it's gonna change from 287, we are down to 267. Also, you can filter results. You see, I'm gonna look for uh, only San Antonio, right? Okay, let's do that. When we do that, now we are down to 88. You see, this is a good tool which can help you filter it down and remove some unwanted stuff. I see baking. I think it allows for five negative keywords to be added, so I'm gonna just do that. Now we are down to 86, okay? And, um, well, I don't see cooking as an option. Let's remove that as well. Gone, so we are down to 61. Okay, let's look at it now. Um, I'm looking at French, French, French. There we go, French classes, San Antonio. Excellent, I'm gonna choose that. French classes, San Antonio, Texas. Excellent, I'm gonna choose that. French classes, San Antonio, TX. Excellent, I'm gonna choose that. French corner, no. French courses, San Antonio, great. French food, no. French language classes, excellent, yeah. French language lessons, yes. Okay, French lessons, yes. You see how cool is this? Really, really quickly, we are getting a bunch of keywords, okay? So you can go on and on. I know this is a little bit of a tedious process, uh, but it's a necessary uh, thing to do. Now, if you have a good set of keywords, guess what? The content will be so much more effective. You will be so well um, prepared to create content that will be useful for your users. For some reason, the formatting is bad here. I'm gonna delete that. Um, let me, yeah, I know why. That's because I aligned it. Let's go with that. Okay, great. You see now, in no time, literally, I have about 11 keywords which are, which are excellent, right? Which is very relevant to the kind of targeting that I'm doing. Okay, another way to expand on this list is called Google Related, you see? Again, you're giving a few more opportunities to target a bunch of keywords that might make sense to you for your prospective customers. Again, as a part of expansion, I'm gonna do something called Google Related. Okay, let's quickly align that. Okay, how do we do this? I'm gonna copy this French classes in San Antonio, go back to my favorite search engine, paste it in, hit enter. And if you scroll down right to the bottom, guess what? You're going to get some more very good stuff right here. So French school, San Antonio, that, that is not in this list, neither in this one. So great, yeah? So you can expand a little, bo little more on that. French school, San Antonio, all good, excellent. Okay, anything else that might be appropriate here? Uh, learn French in Austin, Texas. No, we are looking at San Antonio. Um, so may or may not be appropriate in, in my case. Um, let me see, French courses. San Antonio. All right, okay. So I'm gonna quickly scroll down just to see what's coming up. Same stuff, okay. Italian classes, no. Okay. So, like I told you, um, you could go on and on, really, just by courses, for example, if you wanna do uh, uh, an in-depth keyword research, which I absolutely love and recommend my students to do, um, go to Google, type this in, and type A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, A to Z, that way you have all the different angles covered, all the different alphabets, the way people search could be kept an eye on. Okay, so I'm gonna do, again, f courses and see what comes up there. Um, French classes, right? French lang language classes in San Antonio. French summer classes may not be the one. Okay, anyway, I hope you get the flow here. Yeah, just by going to Google Auto Suggest, you're going to get tons of keywords. Same with Google related. You may not get a lot, but you might get the relevant ones, the related ones. So it's, it's a good idea to do this exercise of checking the Google related. Quickly, let's, let's move on to the next one. The next step within this keyword research process, 
I do is a competition analysis. Competition analysis is an excellent way to find out what your competitors are doing. What are the keywords they are targeting? And also for the keywords that you've already listed, are they weak or are they really strong? Is your competition too, uh, too strong or too weak? You can figure that out. Uh, for this, I use a free tool called MozBar. Okay. So let's go ahead and use MozBar to determine the competition. It's very simple. I've already installed this Chrome extension, but if you do not have one as of now, not a, not a problem. Just go to MozBar Chrome extension. There we go. You see the first one in that list. Let's go to MozBar Chrome extension, and you're going to see the Chrome web store. Open it up. And you're going to see something like this. Since I've already added this to Chrome, it says add it to Chrome. However, in your case, it would say add to Chrome. Okay, so just click on that, activate it, and then just go to this website called moz.com. Moz.com is a great website, um, teaches you tons of stuff with SEO, about SEO. So do check it out, it's a good resource. Um, I just go there and log into my free account. You could do the same. The moment you do that, I can go back to my search results right here and turn this on. Just click on this icon and you know, almost magical. You see that? When you do a search on Google or even go to a specific website, you're going to get some indicators right here. There are a couple of metrics that I, that I keep an eye on. And those two metrics right here are called page authority and domain authority. By using MozBar, I'm able to determine the competition with the use of these metrics. So I recommend you do this. Check it out. Once you install it, you're going to get page authority and domain authority. PA and DA, okay? PA represents the authority of any given page. Domain authority, on the other hand, is the authority for the entire domain, for example, google.com or moz.com. You see those are called domains. And within moz.com, help guides research tools is a page. So page authority and domain authority. So let's go ahead, copy the first keyword in this list. I'm gonna copy it, go back to my Google search engine results page, put it in, scroll down, look at the search results. Okay, the first one, a page authority of nine and a domain authority of 11. Okay, so what does this mean? Metrics are all good, key performance indicators are all good, but how do you analyze that? How do you make use of that data to take action? Well, it's very simple. I look for domain authority less than 20. Less than 20 means that it is outrankable. You see, this website is outrankable. Okay, you could usurp their ranking by doing a little bit of good SEO that you're learning in this course in terms of on-page SEO, off-page SEO and all that, and you'll do, uh, you'll, you'll do yourself good to outrank these websites. So that's how you'd want to do that. Okay. I look for a DA of less than 20, at least a couple of them. I do write the first two um, actually are the exact same websites. Um, so it's the same website listed twice on Google search results, uh, which has a DA of 20, uh, less than 20. 21, it's, it's somewhere on that uh, 20 range. Still okay, but I'm still looking at uh, a little less than 20 further. There is another one. Okay, so we have uh, DAs of less than 20, at least on three occasions on this Google search engine results page. Okay, so that's how I, I determine if my, if my competition is, uh, is, is strong or weak, if I could outrank them, okay? So obviously you would look at the authority, also look at the title, what, whatever they've put here. If it includes your keyword, then, then that's, that's what you would want to target, okay? So like I told you, keep an eye on the PA and DA, 
especially I look at DA at 20 or less. If they are less than 20, it's a good thing for me. Okay, that's, uh, that's what you need to keep an eye on. So I found at least three results with a domain authority or DA of less than 20. That's a good thing. Okay, let's look at one more example before we proceed to the next step. French classes, San Antonio. I'm going to go back to my Google search engine results page, do the exact same thing. Hit enter. Let's see what we've got. Okay, we've already seen this. Uh, this website has a DA of less than 20. 21 is still okay. Sometimes I do consider it. But let's go ahead and dig a little further. Okay, great. We have another one and another one. Okay, all right. We have three uh, search results. We have at least three different search results within the Google search engine results page for the keyword French classes in San Antonio that have DA less than 20. So we're all good. Okay. So this is how you're going to do for each of these keywords. Okay. For the entire list, find out what the domain authority is. And if it's 20 or less, we are on the right track. We are, we are, you know, that's, that's something that you'd want to be happy about when it comes to keywords. And last but not the least, um, again, this is optional, but definitely worth looking at is the volume. Volume is nothing but how many searches happen for a given keyword. Okay, for example, French classes in San Antonio, we could determine how many searches happen on a monthly basis. For this, again, I use a very cool tool, just like our Moz bar. There is a, a great tool called Keyword, Keywords Everywhere. Okay, check it out. Go to Google. Type keywords everywhere for Chrome or just just Chrome that that should suffice, right? Again, it's going to take us to the Chrome Web Store. Already, it is installed on my browser, uh, but for you, if you're doing it initially, it's going to show Add to Chrome. Once you add it, you're going to receive an email, an email that gives you an API code. Okay, there's a, there's a small key, API key. And once you install that, you're gonna get this icon right here. You see the Chrome bar, uh, you click on that, the extension will have the update settings. Just click on that, you type in your API key uh, right in this box. I'm gonna hide it, obviously, because it's an API key that is unique to my usage. But for you, you're gonna get one uh, on your email. Make sure you copy that and paste it in here and in no time you will have access to the volume which is uh, which is super good. Okay, you might want to keep an eye on that one. Um, so how do we do that? Let's go back to the search engine now and I'm going to paste that keyword French classes San Antonio. You see right underneath this search box you're going to get the volume. Volume is 50, right? Great. So that was right here, volume is 50. You could copy another keyword like, um, let's say French classes, San Antonio, Texas. I'm gonna paste it in here and volume. You see, sometimes the volume might show zero, but uh, dear viewers, I, I assure you, these keywords actually show up as a part of Google auto suggest, which means people definitely are searching like that. Sometimes the value shows zero, but I would definitely uh, request you to reconsider that. You might want to go with your gut feeling a little bit, uh, though data is, data is great and all that. If you think French classes San Antonio, Texas could be a potential keyword for you and your prospective customers for the future, you know what? Go for it. Don't stop yourself. I would still go, go ahead with that. It's a good keyword, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and type zero. That's for data collection. But um, if I were to target that keyword, I would still go ahead and do that. Okay, we'll do one last one. French courses, San Antonio. I'm going to copy that. Go back to the search box. Paste that in and look at the volume right here. Again, it's, it shows zero. Uh, but I assure you, it is not. I've seen with so many of my clients 
while it shows zero, I target that keyword. There's a bunch of traffic that's, that, that comes to my client's website. So uh, go ahead, you know, go ahead and use that keyword if you choose to do so. Um, you will get some traffic even if you see a volume of zero. Oh, by the way, uh, Keywords Everywhere is a third party company that's actually scraping data and it could be scraping data directly from Google. So I'm going to show you another great tool that I used to use and I do use once in a while now uh, is called Google Keyword Planner tool. Okay, this is a this is a free tool given by Google um, mostly for advertising purposes for Google Ads. By the way, uh, Google just changed their name from Google AdWords to Ads. So that's, that's how it's going to be. Uh, I can quickly sign in to show you how this tool looks like uh, because you're going to come across um, Google Keyword Planner tool in your digital marketing career at some point in time. So you might as well know about it right now. So again, this is all value addition for you. Um, uh, you see whatever keyword research I've done, the steps that I've covered, uh, is, is more than enough, but I'm giving you extra value so that you understand some of the tools that are offered which could be handy in the future. All right, so here we go. Uh, once this loads up, you will see this wrench icon or the spanner. You click on the tools right here and then look for keyword planner. You see there are two options. I'll, I'll click on this one which is for the, the old one which I think is pretty cool. Um, so this interface is going to come up in a little bit. I'll show you that also if you want. But this is like the classic view of the keyword planner. Okay, we have three options here. It says search for new keywords using phrase, website or category. I'm going to click on that and type French courses San Antonio. You see how cool is that? Super easy. Um, you can put in your landing page and all that but I, I just leave it empty. All locations know I'm going to look at specifically San Antonio, Texas. Let me go ahead and type that in. Uh, you see, um, SEO is all about, actually the whole of digital marketing is all about relevance. Okay, you'll get a bunch of clicks, your, your, your content will be successful, people would love to stay on your website only if it's relevant to them. Okay, so that's your bonus tip. Keep in mind, always um, keep relevancy in mind. Okay, this is all good. You can leave the rest of it the way it is and just click on get ideas. You're going to get two tabs here. One is add group ideas. What Google does is uh, takes the keyword that you've actually input and it's going to show all the related keywords underneath that. Okay, but I'm going to skip that part. Let's get to the, the, the keyword ideas tab. You see right here, Google is going to suggest some keywords. Uh, a bunch of them are not really relevant. Um, again, you have that negative keywords. If you want to add, you could do that. Let's go ahead and add a bunch of them right here. Let's say culinary, uh, cooking, baking, um, and whatnot. Okay, let it be that way. So it's going to remove that if you notice right there. Um, they just vanished um, quickly. How to learn French language and so on and so forth. Um, Let's say uh, for the French courses San Antonio, you see it's going to give you an idea about what the monthly searches are, volume um, and all that good stuff. So this is another very good tool. You could download this whole uh, list of keywords. You see right here it says 230 of them and then you can pick the ones that make sense to you and when I say make sense to you I'm talking about the ones that are relevant to your prospective customers. Okay, so that's a really cool tool. Check it out. Google Keyword Planner tool. Okay, it's a part of Google Ads and it, it, uh, it allows us to do a bunch of research about keywords that might be relevant to our prospective customers. So here we are um, back to the, the spreadsheet. We started with brainstorm. We came up with a bunch of keywords that we think our potential customers might use for searching um, the service or the product that we offer. Um, then we analyze the search engine results page to see if we are on the right track or we are way off. Uh, obviously, if you're way off, you're going to type no here, but most of the keywords are all relevant and um, 
I, I analyze that based on competition. If my competitors show up on Google search engine results page when I do this, I'll be happy. Actually, this is the only place where you'll be happy to see your competitors uh, because you know you're on the right track. Then move, move on to the next stage, which is Google Auto Suggest. I also use a tool called Uber Suggest, which is absolutely free and, um, and it gives me keywords that might be relevant to me as well. I, I'm, I'm expanding this list of keywords. Then we move on to the next stage, which is Google related. Go to Google, type your keyword in, scroll down right to the bottom. Google itself gives you some related keywords which might be relevant to you. And you might want to use those keywords um, because Google wants you to use a bunch of different variety of keywords. So, um, you know, that's, that's useful too. So pick up keywords from Google related. Okay, there is something called latent semantic index. Google looks at that, okay? You can't use the same keyword over and over in your, um, in your content. So when you look at these, uh, if, if something makes sense, you might want to use that as, as, a, as a part of your content as well. So that, you know, in the, in the long run, you start ranking for them as well. So that's, that's something you would, want, you would want to keep in mind. And then I look at the competition. I use this brilliant tool called Mozbar. Look for domain authority of less than 20, at least on a couple of search results, just like this. Yeah, so that's, that's a good way to analyze your competition and then move on to the next stage, which is about getting the volume. Again, use the Chrome extension keywords everywhere that, that gives you an idea of how many people are searching. It also give you, gives you some more related keywords, just like Google, it's adding its own value here. So if you find something useful, go ahead, pick it up as well. So that brings us to the end of keyword research process. This is a very simple, straightforward, step-by-step -step process to come up with the seed keywords and eventually end up with keywords that you could eventually use. Uh, the ones I normally use, I, I target mostly a couple of keywords. I call them primary and secondary keywords. Of course, you can sprinkle the other keywords you see. <laughs> you, you would want to sprinkle rather than stuff keywords. Sprinkle keywords that are related, but mostly my core keywords would be the primary and secondary ones. The one or two keywords that will truly make a difference. For example, French classes San Antonio in this case would be my primary keyword. Okay, thank you. I hope you found value in this. Uh, Check out the rest of the sections to know more about how to use these keywords in your content, in your title and description and all that good stuff. Thank you very much.